Hey everyone, and welcome back to Set For You, the channel that's all about STEM ambassadors, engineering, and tutoring. In today's video, I'll be tackling some of the higher mark questions from the 2025 GCSE Maths Higher Tier Paper 1 exam with step-by-step -step work solutions. So grab a pen, some paper, and let's get started. So in this first question, we are told to prove that the difference in the squares of two consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of four. So if we look at our first even number, we can denote that as 2m and in the second even number we can write as 2m plus 2. So if we want to work out the difference in the squares of these even numbers then what we just have to do is we need to square both so we'll do 2m plus 2 or squared minus 2m or squared and then we just need to show that this is always a multiple of 4. So what I'm going to do is expand my two brackets, so I get 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 2 minus 2n squared. So 2n squared is just going to give us 4n squared. And if we expand our brackets, we get 4n squared plus 4n plus 4n plus 4 and then minus 4n squared. So what we can do here is we can simplify this expression. So 4n squared and 4n squared minus 4n squared, sorry, cancel out. And then we are left with 4n plus 4n, which is 8n plus four. And we need to show that this is always a multiple of four. So we can see from both terms that they have a factor of four. So what I'm going to do is factorize four. And in my brackets, I'm left with two n plus one. So this means that no matter what value of n I substitute into this expression right here, when I multiply it by four, that result will be a multiple of four because it is also divisible by four. So that right there is our proof. So in the next question, we are told that T is inversely proportional to W. W is directly proportional to the cube root of D. When W equals 6, T equals 20. When W equals 1, D equals 8. Find the value of D when T equals 48. So first things first, we are told that T is inversely proportional to W and W is directly proportional to the cube root of D. To get rid of the proportional symbol, I need to include an equal sign and a constant. So T equals K over W and W equals A times the cube root of D. Now what I need to do next is use the conditions that I have been provided with to determine the values of my constants K and A. So when W equals 6, T equals 20. So 20 equals K over 6. Therefore, K equals 20 times 6 which is 120. We can use a second set of conditions. So one, which is W equals A times the cube root of eight. The cube root of eight is two. So one equals A times two. Therefore, A just equals a half. And so with that being said, we can rewrite our equations using our values for our constants. So T equals 120 over W and W equals a half times the cube root of D. So the question has told us to find the value of D when T equals 48. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the value of T, which is 48, into this equation right here, and then rearrange to solve for W. And then I'm going to substitute the value of W into this equation here, and then solve for D. So with that being said, I can write 48 equals 120 over W. W equals 120 over 48. And when I simplify that by dividing the top and bottom by 4, I get 30 over 12. And if I divide the top and bottom by 6, I get 5 over 2. So W equals 5 over 2 or 2.5. I'm now going to substitute that value of W into the equation, the second equation right here, to solve for D. So I have 5 over 2 equals a half times the cube root oops, the cube root of D. And so if I multiply this equation through by two, I get five equals the cube root of D. And so to obtain the value of D, I just need to cube both sides. So D equals five cubed, which is 125. And that right there is my value for D. In the next question, we are told that x equals 0.2 recurring and y equals 6.81 recurring. Work out the value of x, y. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So before I get right into that, I'm going to highlight this line because it's important that we do not forget our fraction must be given in its simplest form. Failure to do this will mean that you will not obtain the full marks for this question. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite x as 0.22222 recurring 
room and I'm going to label this as one and I'm going to multiply that by 10 to get 10x and that will give me 2.22222 recurring and I'm going to label that as two. What I'll do next is I'm going to subtract equation one from two and so that will give me 9x and that will equal two. Therefore, x is simply two over nine. So I've got x in its simplest form. I now need to do the same for y. So I can write y as 0 0.681818181. Notice it's the 81 that recurs. If I multiply this by 10, this gives me 6.81818181 recurring. Now, the key here is knowing which of these equations to subtract. So if you look closely, you will see that 1000y has the decimal points, the numbers after the decimal point, starting with 8. And if we look back at what we have here for 10y, we can see that this decimal point also starts with 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these two equations. So I'll label this as 2 and I'll label this as 4 and simply write 4 minus 2 and that right there is going to give me a thousand y minus 10 y which is 990 y and that will equal 681.818181 recurring minus 6.8181 recurring so that right there is just the same as 681 minus 6 so 990 y equals 675 to therefore obtain the value of y i can divide 675 by 990 and then if i simplify i can divide the top and bottom by three to give me 225 over 330. And then what I'll do next is divide the top and bottom by five and that'll give me 45 over 66. And then finally, I can divide the top and the bottom by three to give me 15 over 22. So now I have Y as a fraction in its simplest form. And going back to the question, we have been told to work out the value of XY. XY is the same as X times Y. So I'm going to multiply them. And so XY will equal two over nine multiplied by 15 over 22. And that right there will give me two times 15 all over nine times 22. Now I've written this like this so that I can start simplifying. So if I cancel the two and the 22 by dividing them both by two, that gives me one and this becomes 11. And if I divide nine and 15 by three, this gives me three and this gives me five. So actually what I'm left with is one times five over three times 11. And so that gives me five over 33, which is my value for X, Y as a fraction in its simplest form. So my final answer is just five over 33. In the next question, we are told to rationalize the denominator of 35 over root 7 and we have been asked to give our answer in its simplest form. So when you are asked to rationalize the denominator of any fraction, you need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the third in the denominator. So in this case, you're going to multiply 35 by root 7 and you're going to multiply root 7 by root 7. So 35 times root 7 is simply 35 root 7. And root 7 times root 7 is the same as root 49. The square root of 49 gives us 7. So you have 35 root 7 over 7. And so 35 divided by 7 is 5. And so your answer is 5 root 7. And that is your answer in its simplest form. In the next part of this question, we are told that root 27 minus 1 over 2 minus root 3 can be written in the form a plus b root 3, where a and b are integers. Work out the value of a and the value of b. So what we need to do here is we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by what we call the conjugate. That simply means that if your denominator is in the form of a plus root b, you need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a minus root b. So I'm going to go ahead and just move that to the side and I need to multiply root 27 minus 1, my numerator, by the conjugate which in this case would be 2 plus root 3. So I can write it as root 27 minus 1 multiplied by 2 plus root 3 and that will be divided by 2 minus root 3 multiplied by 2 plus root 3. And make sure I don't forget my equal sign to show that this is what that will give us. And so what I just need to do now is expand my brackets and simplify the terms so that I can hopefully get to an answer that's in the form they've asked us to leave our answer in. So root 27 times 2 
gives me 2 root 27. Root 27 times root 3 is root 81. And minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. And then minus 1 times root 3 is minus root 3. All of that divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3. And minus root 3 times 2 is minus 2 root 3. And minus root 3 times root 3 is minus root 9. Okay, notice here I'm not skipping any steps and I'd advise each and every one of you to avoid that because if you start skipping steps, you're likely to make silly mistakes and therefore drop easy mark. So what I'm going to do now is start simplifying my terms. 2 root 27 plus the square root of 81, which is 9, minus 2 minus root 3, all over 4 plus 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3. Notice these two terms cancel and so I'm left with 4 minus root 9. Root 9 I can actually write as 3 so this is just 4 minus 3. So we can see the denominator simplifies to 1. Therefore I can write 2 root 27. Root 27 is the same as root 9 times root 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So we can write this as 3 root 3. So I'm going to write my first term in my numerator as 2 times 3 root 3 plus 9 minus 2 minus root 3. I'm just going to draw an arrow here just to make sure we can use up all the space on our answer booklet. 2 times 3 root 3 simply gives us 6 root 3. 9 minus 2 is positive 7 and then our final term is minus root 3 and we can see 6 root 3 minus root 3 equals 5 root 3 plus 7. Remember the form that we have been asked to leave our answer in, a plus b root 3. So I can write this as 7 plus 5 root 3. Therefore, we can see that the value of a is simply 7 and the value of b is 5. And we can also see that these are both integers. So we know that this is definitely right. And in the final question for today's video, we are told that g of x equals 1 minus 3x and h of x equals 2x squared minus 1. Show that 3g h of x plus hg of x equals 0 has just one solution for x. So what we can see here is a combination of both functions and composite functions. Now if you don't understand composite functions well enough this question will cause you quite a few issues. So what we have is we need to show that 3g h of x. So I'm going to start with this term here 3g h of x. Let's first of all break this down. So we can write this as g h of x and what that means is wherever you have x in your function of g we need to replace it with what we have here for h of x. So for example, g h of x would just be 1 minus 3 bracket, and I'm going to substitute h of x into that, and that gives us 2x minus 1. So g h of x will simply be 1 minus 6x squared plus 3. And if I simplify that, that just gives me 4 minus 6x squared. So that right there is what g h of x is. So 3 g h of x will be 3 lots of that. And so that would be 3 times 4 minus 6x squared. And that gives us 12 minus 18x squared. So we've got our value for 3 g h of x. And now we just need to do the same for h g of x. So hopefully you know what this gives us. Wherever we have x, in h of x we are going to replace it with g of x which in this case is 1 minus 3x so i'll write this as 2 bracket 1 minus 3x or squared minus 1 and so that gives us 2 times 1 minus 3x times 1 minus 3x minus 1 and so what we can do is we can expand and simplify our brackets we get 1 minus 3x minus 3x plus 9x squared minus 1. So that's what hg of x would give us. And then what we can do now is we can expand and simplify. So we'll have 2 minus 6 of x minus 6x plus 18x squared minus 1. And so hg of x would equal 2 minus 1, which is just 1, minus 6x minus 6x is minus 12x. And then we have plus 18x squared. So right now we've got our expressions for both 3g h of x and hg of x. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add these two and set them equal to zero to show that this has one solution. So what we have now is we have 12 minus 18x squared plus our hg of x, 1 minus 12x plus 18x squared. Notice I'm not putting this in a bracket because we have a positive. If we had to subtract hg of x, I'd have to put all of this 
inside a bracket just to avoid making errors with our signs and we set that equal to zero so we can see here that the 18x squared terms cancel and so we have 12 plus 1 which is 13 minus 12x equals zero therefore 12x equals 13 and so x equals 13 over 2 which is clear that we only have one solution for x and that right there is your answer to this question thank you so much for watching today's video i hope these work solutions have helped boost your confidence ahead of papers two and three i'll be uploading more solutions for other 2025 maths papers across various exam boards including the ial if you found this video helpful don't forget to give a thumbs up as it really helps support the channel and lets me know you're enjoying the content and if you're new here make sure to subscribe to sets for you for more step-by-step -step math solutions engineering insights and stem inspiration also let me know in the comments if you have any specific questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos as I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. Until next time, keep practicing, stay curious and I'll see you in the next video.